Hey everybody, it's Felisa. This is going to be another entry into Spotlight Sunday where I highlight cases of the missing and the lost endangered, particularly those of African American women. A great portion of the information that I'm going to be mentioning today comes from charlieproject.org. As always, I invite you to visit that site and if you are able please consider donating to the site administrator uh, so that she can continue her outstanding work with presenting cases of the missing across the United States. Today's case is going to be on Shamika Kenyanta Cozy. The merits of the case are as follows. Shamika has been missing since December the 29th, 2008 from Berkeley, Missouri. Her classification is in danger of runaway. Her date of birth is given as October 1st, 1992. She was 16 at the time that she disappeared and today she would be 27. Her height and weight at the time of her disappearance was given as 5'5", between 135 and 160 pounds. She was last seen wearing a black long sleeve shirt a tan Old Navy jacket, and blue jeans. She is an African-American female, black hair, brown eyes. Her nickname is Mika, and her ears are pierced. She also wears glasses. Details of the disappearance are as follows. Shamika disappeared from Berkeley, Missouri between 1.30 and 8.30 a.m. on December 29, 2008. She was last seen at her aunt's home in the 6,000 block of Napier. When her family awoke in the morning, she was gone. Shamika's clothes and other belongings were inside of the residence. The front door was unlocked and there was no indication of foul play. Authorities believe that she left on her own. Shamika may still be in the local area. She has been known to frequent East St. Louis, Illinois. Few details are available in her case. Some agencies give the date of her disappearance as December 28th or December 30th. One of the most frustrating things about presenting this case is that there are so few details um, available. Even now, you know, after about 11 years, there's still not a whole lot to go on. Um, I had to piece together several articles along with what was available on the Charlie Project. And, you know, I did find some information uh, from an interview that her mother gave some years later after her disappearance. And her mother did confirm, even though there was some ambiguity as to exactly when Shamika went missing, mom said that December the 28th was the last day that she spoke with her and that it was a normal day. Um, as I said, at the time, um, she was 16 and apparently she was in and out of the home several times that night. Um, there was someone fighting for her attention outside and when everyone woke up in the morning, Kaz uh, Shamika was gone. And that's what her mother said. She also said that um, it wasn't that she was never trying to paint Shamika as a perfect child. Um, although, you know, in this article, there were just a couple of things that was mentioned. Number one, um, that she uh, had been caught, I guess, sitting in the car with a much older man and she was worried that she was smoking marijuana. She also discovered a fake ID that her daughter was using to sneak into local nightclubs. Um, and there's not a whole lot of information given for that, like how often does Shamika go to these nightclubs and quite frankly that may be the way that she even came in contact with this quote-unquote older man because if she were in nightclubs or even strip clubs then of course she would be on the radar potentially of someone who was a predator or someone who had nefarious intent and you know we all know that teenagers don't have the best judgment when it comes to character or being able to decipher whether someone wants to do them harm. So, you know, I'm not quite sure if there was a punishment once she was caught sitting in the car with this, this guy, or was it ever discovered who this guy was? Was there ever any information, you know, run on his car or his license plates or, you know, things of that nature? 
but I would suspect that um, someone who had access to her um, probably came by the house that night, you know, for all intents and purposes. It just seems more plausible that, you know, Shamika didn't plan on leaving for good. Uh, she was visiting with her aunt. She had her overnight bag at the house. She had a purse at the house and she had her phone at the house. All of those items were left behind. It would seem to me that, you know, if she were planning on leaving and not returning, that she would take something with her. She also left her jacket in the house. So, and I'm not quite sure what the night temperatures were, but it feels like she stepped outside, probably wasn't going to be outside in the elements, um, probably was going to sit in the car and, you know, just chat as she probably has done um, several times before. But on this particular night, uh, perhaps she was lured into this car um, to talk to someone that she knew or she was getting to know. And that person drove off in the night with her and she has never been heard from again. One of the most uh, challenging things about this, uh, according to her mother, and I concur, has been that law enforcement immediately labeled her as an endangered runaway, not as someone who was missing, not as someone who possibly was abducted, but that she willingly walked away from the house. And even though she was only 16, when she disappeared, the mom has said that law enforcement has spent little to no time actually working this case and trying to figure out what happened to Shamika. Furthermore, um, she's been gone for 10 years and she's, you know, she's been, or 11 years and she's been gone without any of her belongings. Um, she's been gone without any of her effects. She hasn't contacted her family. No one has heard from her. And, you know, the fact that the reports are saying that she may frequent Illinois where she was living in Missouri. You know, how would a child of 16 even get out of the state to another state? And how would she survive without someone helping her or, you know, putting into place some way for her to survive? Um, even on the street, it would be very difficult for, you know, a, a, a teenager to survive for 11 years and so therefore um, her mother as well as you know many other people I'm sure myself included just don't believe that she walked away under her own volition this feels very coerced you know that she was lured away and um, that you know it would have been better if the police actually had engaged in a, a uh, search for her and Ashley had taken her seriously. Um, mom did say, and this was a quote that was in one of the articles that I read, said that she said, do I believe she left on her own with someone? Yes, said Hill, but she was intending to come back. She was intending to come back home. She was not intending to stay gone for 10 years. And then mom went on to say that there were signs that someone had a hold on her daughter. And again, like I mentioned, you know, she had been sitting in this car, she was smoking marijuana. And the bottom line to it all is that mom worries that her daughter um, has been uh, this, the target and the victim of human trafficking, sex trafficking. So, you know, the family actually conducted some searches on their own. They held out, they um, passed out flyers, um, really tried to canvas the neighborhoods and employ the local media and, um, you know, really try and keep the information out there. But one of the difficulties was that she just disappeared without a trace. And, you know, when I was looking at the timeline of events, you know, it's just such a large, like there's, she disappeared I'm assuming that 1.30 in the morning was the last time that anybody saw her and perhaps they were all up and then they went to bed. And then, you know, by the time the first person got up in the morning at 8.30 and discovered she wasn't there, like that's a whole seven hours. And you can literally be in two states, depending on where you start from, in seven hours. So, you know, it was very difficult, I'm sure, to try and figure out where she would have gone and what direction she would have gone off in, especially if they didn't really have any knowledge or, you know, understand nothing to go off of. No, you know, it's not like it is now. 
Um, I'm guessing where, you know, you can kind of try and sleuth a little bit for, you know, their social media pages and internet browser history and maybe phone history and things like that. But there was just not a whole lot to go off of. And so, um, unfortunately, by the time they even discovered that she was missing, there was potentially, um, a, a pretty significant lag time. So I wanted to put this case out there because, I wanted to try and generate some additional press and conversation regarding Shamika. You know, I had never heard this case before and it was a little frustrating to know that there was so little information concerning her disappearance. But, you know, nevertheless, I wanted to share it, you know, in the hopes that this number one helps to bring and shine a spotlight on her case and perhaps jog the memory of someone who may have seen something that morning or may have heard something and just blew it off and didn't think that it was significant and you know are able to get the 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 family closer to finding out where Shamika is if you have any additional information that you can share please reach out to the Berkeley Police Department I'll leave the phone number below Um, If you have any tips or if you have any further commentary, please leave your comments below. All I ask is that you be respectful in the comments because her family is still out there searching and we want to be sensitive to them and show them grace and kindness as they search for their loved ones. As always, it is just my intention to shine a spotlight on these cases to bring it to the forefront and hopefully bring closure to these families. At any case, it's time to bring Shamika home. Thank you. Y'all be blessed.